בשמחה, מי שנכנס אדם מרבים בשמחה. We have an opportunity here, opportunity here right now. We have an opportunity to be בשמחה. And if we're in שמחה, we're able to tap into a tremendous amount of כוחות to bring about the Yeshua, to bring about the Shefa. The nest of Purim happened through the itorerut of Shamaim from above to below. Certain times like Hanukkah, things were happening, you know, from, from above, it was a nest, a nest that happened, it was an open miracle. And here on Purim, what happened? It didn't look like Hashem was even involved. It didn't look like Hashem was intervening. And we know that every time in the Megillah, when it mentions HaMelech, the king, it's referring to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's referring to the Almighty himself. And yes, Hashem was intervening, but it didn't look like it. And who was the one that was, he was orchestrating it. Who was the one that was allowing it to, to happen, that was, that was causing the things to happen? And we know that was Mordechai and Esther, who Hashem planted to be able to bring the Yeshua. Esther Malka, we just, it was just her yard site just now, and Zayin Adar. And this is the time, Esther Malka, she was the one who was Meorer the Yeshua. We as women have this power. We have the power to be Meorer Yeshuaot for Am Yisrael. We have the ability to bring about Achdu to Klal Yisrael. If we just join together, Besimcha, if we join together, Berina, if we bring about this koach, the koach that we have as women uniting together, let us today take upon ourselves to be besimcha even more, to understand that when we are in the state of simcha and we're metzapeh for Yeshuot, Hashem will be mecholel, He will cause that to happen. There will be an itorut from above to below. If we show Hashem that we want it and we need it and we cannot without, without Mashiach coming, we cannot do this. Look what's happening in the world. There is no higher power. There is no control, no government. Nothing that's happening now is, is allowing us to be able to know what's going on. What's going to be tomorrow? What's going to be next week? When are they going to open the airports? When are they going to, when are they going to do you know, anything to be able to help us to understand what's going on? When are they going to stop all the closings? We don't know. We don't know anything. What do we know? Thank you, Abba, for this opportunity to be able to unite together, to pray to you, to find out that really the Yeshua is in our hands. If we pray together and unite in tefillah, which is what we're going to do today. And we show Hashem before the great day of Purim, when the Kla Yisrael was saved from annihilation, that we two together are going to pray for all those who are in need of Yeshuot. We know that we have no one to depend on, only you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And so today is a day, a special day dedicated for Tefillah, for Yeshua. And we are dedicating today this, this whole forum together of joining together in Tefillah, for the refuah shlema of kol amecha Yisrael, for the Yeshua of kol amecha Yisrael. And we're going to join at the end, we're going to be davening together, we're going to be saying tehillim, we're going to be saying special tefillot for the geulah, we're going to have kabbalat ol malchut shamayim, accepting upon ourselves the yoke of heaven, and we're going to tell Hashem that it is a time for the Yeshua, we need you Hashem, to be able to save us. We're going to start off with some divrei chizuk, from some of our speakers, and um, at six o'clock, six o'clock Eretz Yisrael time, which is 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and wherever you are, you are in the world, hopefully you know the time change, the time difference, but that's the time that we're going to stop and gather together in Tfina, so please join us at that time as we gather together and understand that you have a power, you have a tremendous koach, especially as a woman, the woman, the M, is the shorish of emuna, the faith that we hold on to so strongly. It comes from the M. It comes from the mother, the women. Let us understand that there's a koach, that when we pray, it makes the difference. It makes a roshem. Let's unite, besimcha, be'ahava, and show Hashem how much we want so desperately.
the Geula and the Yeshua to come. And so I want to thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm going to keep it brief and I want to turn over the mic to Reet Esther Ryder. Reet is an incredible, incredible woman who I met who has gone through many challenges and has overcome through her emunah. She has or energy and um, the special programs that she runs to be able to promote emunah or talk and several other um, programs that she is running and, and shiurim that she gives on tour anytime. And you can find her on her um, website, which she'll put here. And really, really, she is an incredible person who I've gained so much from. And I hope that you too can gain tremendous, tremendous kohot and, and um, emuna from her today. So thank you, Arid Esther, for joining us. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm just going to turn the camera here around. This is um, quite interesting how I have to just keep maneuvering myself around. Okay, now I now I move now I'm now I'm uh, maneuvering myself around to be able to actually see in the camera at the same time. Karen, thank you so much for uh, leading this very important movement. Lev Ha'am really is the heart of our nation. And um, it's, it's wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to be together with um, so many uh, beautiful women from all around the world. This really is a worldwide global um, calling of all of us. Um, I want to say that men here are invited as well, <laughs> even though we are saying that, uh, you know, us women, we have a lot of koach, but of course, you know, we unite together, um, women and men together today to join in to accept upon ourselves Ol Malchut Shemaim, the yoke of Shemaim. Um, and again, I also want to extend my gratitude and appreciation to TorahAnytime.com, who's hosting this live, because we know there are going to be hundreds and hundreds of people from around the world, and there's only so much Zoom could take in. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're inviting everybody to join in on Torah Anytime uh, live. And, um, I also want to thank Hazak for also um, helping to spread the word and um, and all the amazing organizations that are involved because it's not just us. We know there are many, many organizations that are really you know, yelling out and saying it's time to speak up. It's time to yell out. It's time to cry out to Hashem and it's, it's time to say to Hashem, Ad Matai, until when? So I'm also going to keep this very brief. Uh, brief because I know that there's a, a lot of amazing speakers. You know, we've got Miriam Yerushalmi and um, Rifki, and we've got a lot of other beautiful um, voices that need to be heard today. Um, but just something that uh, I feel is um, a beautiful point that we should uh, bring into mind: the idea of it's, it's just one of my favorite holidays, Purim, because the idea is for us today every day, this whole week, this whole year, but particularly as we approach Adar, the uh, calling of our times is to awaken within us this unconscious sense of love that you and I both have, endless, endless, endless amount of love that you and I have right now that we sometimes are in touch with, sometimes we're not, but the idea is we want to do whatever we possibly can to number one, have a Muna in that love that we know and trust that we have that love inside of, uh, inside of us. Each and every one of us knows, has to know, has to believe, has to trust that we essentially have this love. It's an innate love. It's an instinct of love that we have towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem, our creator, and that no matter what, we are drawn to, and yearn to want to feel that closeness to him. And so when we gather together, like in events like today, globally around the world, what we're doing is we're professing that emuna, we're declaring that emuna in ourselves that we have this love towards Hashem. We're in igniting it, we're recognizing that it's there, that it's been dormant, and that we need to just strike a match and light ourselves on fire. Now, one of the things we hope to achieve, God willing, um, in today's event and, and in general, but certainly the events leading to Purim, is the famous axiom and description of Purim, Venahafor Hu. 
And for that, I want to bring us to a very beautiful teaching in Baba Batra, where um, the Rebbeim and the Torah scholars there talk about Olam Hafuch Raiti, that those who enter into the chambers of the world to come after 120, right? They notice that everything that they saw when they were dwelling down in this physical realm, everything was upside down. So can you imagine like if I'm just like putting my camera right now and it's upside down, you'd be looking to sort of try to make sense of this upside down kind of movement. And yet, and yet Purim, which is a day that we celebrate this reality, not Fahu, we celebrate the fact that we live in an upside down reality. And, and the Gemara tells us here in Baba Badra that that is the true way of looking at reality. The true way of looking at reality is Olam Hafuch Raiti. The way we're seeing the world right now is upside down. And in Purim, we have a, the, the, the amazing opportunity to be able to say to Hashem, you know what? I know things are upside down and they're not the way that they're showing their face to me. I know that there is a mechitza, there's a barrier that's blocking us from being able to see the reality as it is. And we reaffirm this, this declaration, we reaffirm the state of mind on Purim. And when we gather together today, that is basically what we're saying. We're saying, Hashem, it doesn't matter what I'm seeing out there. It doesn't matter what the world is showing me right now. I know that everything is upside down and I know that there's a mask and I am here and we're all here today to declare and to say that we recognize that there is a, a, a turnaround, that li life is a costume, that we get a chance in Purim to meet Hashem real time in the real reality of life. And that is the great, declaration of Amuna that we are able to essentially bring upon ourselves starting right now. When we look at the downfall of Haman, sort of like where everything started, right? There's this particular um, part in the Megillah, when we read the Megillah, where we notice that um, it says that the king can't fall asleep. And we all know that the king is the analogy for Hashem in the story of the Megillah Distel. And so when we read that the king can't fall asleep, we understand this to mean Hashem is not sleeping. What happens after that? So it's sort of, sort of like the, the king is sitting in bed, you know, twiddling his thumb saying, hmm, I wonder what I should be doing right now. There's no melatonin and there's nobody here to pop me some, some whiskey. So you know what, let's just take out the book of memory and let's just sort of see what kind of memories we can invoke so that i could you know use this time where i'm awake anyway and 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 see if there's something that i need to take care of and this is what we're doing right now and this is what we do in purim purim hashem says i'm awake i'm opening my ears i'm waiting to hear memories. I'm waiting to be reminded of memories, memories of my children remembering me, my children who are going to profess they've done beautiful deeds. I'm waiting for, to hear from them that there are certain things that I may have forgotten that I need to remember in order to bring about the Yeshua and bring about the salvation, the ultimate sal salvation, whether it's personally or collectively to all of Am Yisrael. And that is essentially what we're doing right now. We're sort of calling out right now to Hashem. We're asking him to remember, remember that we're, we're his children. We're asking him to please remove the cover of Hastara and of that that cover that sort of barriers that separates us between us and and, Hash, and and him and we're asking hashem to reveal the malchut through esther through the hastara through the hiddenness we're asking hashem reveal your kingships at you, the esther hamaka means the 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 hidden kingship that's really what esther hamaka symbolizes we're asking hashem 
that this be revealed to us from the sphere of Malchut, which is the lowest sphere, when we're at our lowest, we're asking Hashem, please remove this cloak, please show us your face, and then we have to meet a Haman and Amalek, we have to meet that energy in the middle that sort of numbs us, deadens our, our inspiration, wants to kill us at our source, but we push forward. We understand that anything could change around, anything can turn around. And we wait as we yearn and as we profess and as we awaken the memories of, of the love, of the covenant that we have with Hashem, we're um, hoping and praying and yearning and showing Hashem that we're waiting for that all to basically now fall, turn it all around. Bring, go from, from the gallows that Haman thought that he was going to be hanging, you know, Mordechai, he got hung. From decree to salvation, we're waiting for that. We want another Purim right now. And we're in the midst of it where we can ask for it, and we can yearn for it, and we can yell out for it. One of the most beautiful points of, of the Megillah is at the point where it's, it's like a challenging point for Esther HaMalka, where Mordechai HaTzadik comes over to Esther HaMalka and he says to her, Umi yodea im le'et hazot higat l'malchut. Who knows? Maybe all that happened, Vashti dying and you being chosen and everything until now, it's all for this moment. And now you and I need to ask ourselves, who knows if 5,781 years, COVID over the last 12 months and so, and all the difficulties, everything that we personally and collectively are going through in our lives, who knows is if not for this moment, we have arrived at this moment right now as we're ready within the next half an hour to yell out worldwide to Hashem to bring Mashiach now because we're yearning and craving and we can't wait any longer. And it's interesting that it's used in singular verb. The, 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 the tense is singular. Le'et hazot he got. Mordechai is saying he got, which means that for us, he's talking to me. He's talking to you. He's talking to you whether you're looking on, you know, live or the recording or any. He's asking you. Mordechai Atzadik is asking every single one of us. Le'et hazot, you have come to this point. Are you taking responsibility? Am I taking responsibility for the galut, for this long, dragged out, painful exile? Am I taking responsibility? Because that is essentially what Mordechai Tzaddik is asking Esther Malka. Who knows? And it's once she takes the keys in her hands and says, you know what? You're absolutely right. I'm going to take responsibility. She And she says, you know what? But I can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. Knas et kol hayodim, gather all, everyone together, which is what we're doing here. Gather everyone together. I want everyone to come together because once I, you, each and every one of us, once we take responsibility over yearning, crying out, doing whatever we possibly can to bring Mashiach, working on our amuna, professing Throw away my logic. I'm going to break the vessel of my brain called logic so that I could reach higher, that I can go higher to the Keter and I can receive that supernatural energy of, of the ness, of the miracle that's waiting to enter into my life, into your life. When we take responsibility individually, each one, La Zot, he got you and I are now here. Then the Knos, the Knesset Yisrael, the, uh, the assembly of Israel, can now have a strong voice, but it takes each and every person, every single one of us to, to stand up to the plate. And when Hashem, um, what Hashem does, so to speak, is Hashem arranges the events of the world in response to our actions. So if we take responsibility, every single one of us, 
Hashem could essentially now change the 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 way the things the the way the chain of actions that come from it. And how do we know this? What's the next verse? After Knosset Kol Yudim, what's the next verse? Watch. Vayas kechol asher tziftalav. Everything that Esther demands, so to speak, requests. Vayas kechol everything, everything that Esther Maka asks from that point on is done. So what's the process? Take responsibility, gather together, and God willing, the sweetening, the hamtaka of the three-step transformational process is that eventually, God willing, Hashem arranges the events of the world based on those two levels of responsibility and response that you and I, as we're doing today, and as we will continue to do, of course, leading up Bezlat Hashem to, to Purim. I, I want to say um, one more, you know, one more something that we hopefully can gather in our hearts and open up that heart wall that we all have because it's been hard. It's been really hard. I'm, I'm here to tell you we're going through a rough time and um, we need a lot of amuna. The amuna that, that is required of us right now, as the Magid of Medrash says, it's just like climbing up a freshly painted wall with nothing else but pliers to keep you climbing up and you keep falling down. That's what we all feel. Every time we feel like we're lifting ourselves up, we do feel a sense of going down. But the key is to stay in the boxing ring, not to bring up the white you know, flag and to keep fighting and to stay with our emunah and to stay loyal to trusting that Hashem is going to get us out of this. Be'ezlat Hashem. One of the things that I do, I put out, as um, Karen mentioned, I put out um, a, a, a weekly podcast called Or Talk. You can find it on SoundCloud. Uh, amongst of other different divrei Torah um, that you can find in dailydoseofamuna.com and oramunaenergy.com. So one of the things that I put out today in today's or talk, which I felt was so powerful, it had to be said again. I feel like I need to hear it again. Was that when you look at the word aruhaman, aruhaman means cursed is haman. The root for aru is how is it spelled? Aleph resh vav resh. The root of Aru, cursed in Hebrew, yes, the root of the word Aru is Aleph Resh, O, light. Interesting. How is it that the word for curse, Aru, and the word for light, O, both share the same two letters? That means that in Shemaim, basically, they both come out, the energy of both come out from the same gate. And yet, when it comes down into our world, they kind of, it kind of separates because now it's like either going in the direction of God forbid being a curse or going in the direction of light. And what that means for us is that whatever we feel in our lives that is seemingly a curse and, and let's not use this literally. It's not, I'm not talking about a, like a real life curse per se. When we say curse, it means anything that's like a plague, negative, hard, you know, difficult for us in our lives. That's kind of like the curse. We need to know that everything, like the Hamans in our life, the Hamans in our life, the difficulties in our life, the curses, so to speak, in our lives, the nega, the plagues, the difficulties in our lives, they are a source of light. The reason, one of the main reasons we know that Hashem brings upon us the viruses and the difficulties and the challenges and everything is so that we could lift it up to light so that we can pierce through and recognize that there's a message in the bottle, that there's a sweetening that we need to come to if we just stay with it and don't give up on it. We can actually figure it out and get to a higher level of consciousness and then be in the same situation sometimes and not see it as a curse anymore. Again, this is something I teach a lot in the programs in the Oramuna Energy Institute. Another thing I want to just bring out, some beautiful switch of language. Those who follow the Daily Dose of Amuna know I love to play Scrabble with the letters. It's one of the ways that the Baal Shem Tov Kadosh would essentially do Yehudim and unifications. He would unscramble the reality by taking the letters of words and, and rearranging their order. 
and then reading reading it differently okay so if you look at the word haman it also could read the word nama nama from the word lanum means to sleep what is one of the energies that haman does for us well we can look at it in two different ways either he comes to us when we're asleep which is what amalek does he likes to deaden our spirit and take the zest out of our, ener our out of our energy out of our work out of our inspiration and passion for hashem but also we could look at it from the place as if when we're asleep, he gets us to awaken. He awakens us from the sleep. And that's the reason why we have the Haman, so to speak, in our life and in our history. It's in order so that we should awaken ourselves from our slumber. The other word that when we switch the letters around, it's also mana, mishloach, manot. Haman gets us to send Mishloach Manot, acts of kindness and loving kindness and unity so that we could become together like today, where we could unite, come together and recognize that my portion, Mana means my portion, is so important that it could bring about all that loving kindness. Everything could be turned around by what I do, by my Mana, obviously there's a lot of other connotations we can relate to it. The man that f fell down, of course, to Am Yisrael, which is the source of all goodness and greatness. But let me just end with this. When you take the gematria, the numerical value of Haman, you get, interestingly, 14. Other words that are also with the same gematria, lots of them, but I'm just going to mention a few. David. David Amelech. Same gematria as Haman. Ohev, love. Hashem loves, Hashem's love. Ahuv, Ohev, Hashem loves us. This is all also in the gematria of Haman 14. Also another thing interesting that Haman is 14. Purim is Yudalid, the 14th of Purim. Interesting. When you look at Yud Dalit Haman, what it gets you to recognize a hidden note there is that it's though it says Yud Dalit is Haman, so it's Haman Adar. That's the essence of Purim. David Melech in Adar. Yad Hashem. Yud Dalit is Yad. Yad Hashem. What is Haman? Haman is the Yad, is the hand. He's the hand of Hashem. Well, we understand what is Adar, Aleph, Hashem, Dar. Hashem lives. What basically we see here is Hashem prepared everything so perfectly. He prepared the fact that when we have to go against an energy called Haman, which is the negativity, the plagues, the difficulties, the curses, everything else, all that in our lives as we are experiencing today, Hashem is saying, Alev Dar, I'm living with you. I'm living with you. I'm with you. I'm carrying you through. Yad Hashem. It's the hand of Hashem that's taking us through. And I'm going to deal with Haman. You don't worry about it. You just do your mana. You do your manot, your mishloach manot. Waken yourself up. Nama. Get yourself up from your sleep. Don't go numi, numi, yaldati. Don't go sleeping. Wake yourself up as we're doing today. And be'ezrat Hashem, be'ezrat Hashem, me'ayin yavo ezri, me'ayin, from the nothingness, from the place where we don't understand, nahafohu, we don't understand, adelo yada, I have no idea, Hashem, how you're going to bring the salvation. I don't know how you're going to unfold the ge'ula. Adelo yada, but I'm celebrating adelo yada in Purim because I don't have to know. You and I don't have to know what Hashem's master plan is. We just have to yell out to him and ask for it to happen because we haven't lost hope or amuna in it. And we profess that today, and Be'ezrat Hashem, with the continuing Divrei Chizuk, will be able to awaken our hearts and awaken our souls so that we'll be able to really read this beautiful tefillah, read this gorgeous tefillah, and all the tilim. Let's really pour our hearts out, really open up our souls, and really ask Hashem me'ayin from nothingness, just send it to us. We're waiting for it, Be'ezrat Hashem. I'm gonna invite everyone to, to continue the, the process again through the different other healing programs that, that I teach. 
And um, I have a whole series on opening up to Mashiach's light. Let's learn together. Let's grow together. And it should be all L'schut Rachamei Shemayim and the Yeshuot of Klai Yisrael. Amen. Amen v'amen. Thank you so much. We'll read Esther Ryder. Unbelievable. Such powerful gems. Really enjoying, you know, hearing your words of inspiration. And, you know, it's really incredible what you're saying. It's really benafochu. We started with benafochu. It's really starting to turn around. I feel that this tremendous, tremendous energy that we have here together as we're gathering and hearing these words of inspiration from Mrs. Arit Esther Ryder. She's an unbelievable koach. And I really hope that we can take and internalize these words as we join together in Tila. Without further ado, I would like to welcome the next speaker because we're trying to be on time for the Tefillah gathering at 6 p.m. Israel, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, the next speaker is Miriam Yerushalmi, a good friend of mine. We joined together in a few events with Lev Ha'am. Um, Miriam runs Sane, Saving Anishama Endowment, amongst uh, many, many projects that she's involved with and many books that she's written. She herself is a, is a therapist, a coach. Um, she's the, one of the heads, she's the heads of CBTT, which is uh, uh, training in CBT with Torah. And um, many of you know her from many, many different forums. And today she will share some words of inspiration about the power of prayer and Yeshua being mitzvah for the Yeshua. Miriam Yerushalmi. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. It's very hard to speak after all of you have spoken such beautiful words and feeling it from the warmth of your hearts, uh, definitely penetrating mine. And I always pray whatever I say coming from my heart will also enter yours. Wow. It has uh, been a year of pleading, yearning, longing, praying, begging, and Hashem is listening. That's for sure. That's for sure. Oh my, but what have we not done to try to bring Mashiach now? What have we not done since the time of Mordechai, since the time even before that, running and escaping to just chase Hashem and say, I'm with you wherever you take me, wherever I'm going to, I know it's you, Hashem. We know with all that, the Pasuk that says, Simcha Poretz Geder. And I hope today, the month of Adar, where Hashem is dwelling now, the Alufa Shela Olam, that we should ignite within us a greater level of Simcha, even though we've gone through a lot. Because really, Simcha is the key to bring Mashiach. This is the work of this generation. As they say, Ivd with Hashem Simcha. Yeah, you can fake it till you make it, but it's work. <laughs> we got to take the, 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 the steps of extra simcha because that's the key to really break down the walls so that the geula can come, techeb umiyad mamish, the revealed, where all the revealed good, where we can celebrate mamish. They say that a good-hearted person is always celebrating. What is a good-hearted person? Not only the good-hearted person that's kind and has the power to override their thoughts of uh, negativity so that they can even, you know, be kind to someone who wasn't really no <laughs> so kind to us. The good-hearted person is someone who has broad-mindedness. The person who has broad-mindedness can mamish, have the power to override the limitations of the mind. And to get to the penimiyut haneshama, which is in the penimiyut of halev, to be able to say, I see darkness, but really I see light. The penimiyut halev is where our emuna is, where our bitachon is, where our ability to override our mind. And that's why it says, em habanim smecha. And Adar is the time to achieve that. The mother of children has happiness. But if you deeply look into that sentence, 
The person who has banim, banim comes from the word of bina, someone who has this broad mindedness, meaning to go beyond the brain, to go beyond the rational mind and tap into the inner essence of the soul that has infinite patience to wait out God's plan. And if you look at the word simcha, it also has the word sameach. The sameach, right, is mashiach, mem, shin, and ches. And if you look at the word mashiach, it also has the words when you think about machshaba. Because the only way to have a Geula mindset is through the way you're thinking to be able to produce really good and healthy uh, emotions is from the, the beginning of the way you think. So if you charge up your Bina, if you learn and you meditate and you dive in and you fill your mind with such positive thoughts, then the thoughts will go into your heart. Then your heart can act upon that knowledge and then you have Simcha. We know the whole story of Purim is that Esther represents the soul. And she's yearning and longing every step of the way of her getting closer and closer to the chambers of the king. Hash, the king, Ahashvei, was representing, believe it or not, Hashem. And she's going through this journey of yearning to get closer and closer. And she almost like falls to the ground in humility. When we can have that level of, of wisdom that enters our heart, we can reach that level of, of, of such bitl to Hashem. He knows what he's doing. He doesn't need my worries to figure out the plan. Then, as you know in the story, she's, she, Hashem, represented by King Ahasuerus, is, is given, is given the, the, the scepter. And she holds on to the whole scepter. And the golden scepter represents the light of Hashem. And the king lifts her up with his scepter, giving us now even more power to raise ourselves up, to breathe, to be able to cope, to be able to have the imuna. It's Hashem that's going to give us all these powers. Mordechai represents Torah. Because she says, I can't do this without you, Mordechai. Mordechai represents the Torah. The Torah will help us get closer and closer to be able to connect and unify ourselves with the moon and be tough and with Hashem. That is what gives us the simcha. That is what gives us the power to have a celebrating energy. Yes, we have to have Adel Yada when we don't know the difference between Geula and not Geula. Can you imagine today all of us taking the step to say, I'm going to pretend. <laughs> That it's mamish gul, I'm not going to know the difference. What does that mean? What does that really mean? Meaning I'm not going to be sad. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to do the things that when gula comes, I'm not going to be able to, for an inch of a second, dive into. So imagine if today, the day that we're all praying for Mashiach, because when we're going to pretend that it is Mashiach, and we're going to pretend in our mind's eye that I'm not going to let the darkness make me feel dark, then we're living with Shiach now until the ultimate one, Techo Bumiyad Mamish, when we're going to be in Yerushalayim together, really celebrating. But why wait? Let's celebrate now. Let's take Simcha and, and use it as a catalyst and use it as a way to cause us to continuously celebrate. Well, fake it till you make it can go only so far. It's not so easy. And that's where tefillah comes in. And if you learn, when you pray, first of all, it's a time of moichin de gadlus. It's not just, and it's not just, thank you, Hashem, thank you, Hashem, which thanking Hashem is everything. Oh my gosh, that's dayinu. And it is that. But a lot of people don't know the time of davening is moichin de gadlus. It's an expansiveness of the consciousness of the mind. To be able to, like a pregnant woman and her womb is expanding and is enabling another entity into her womb, our mind expands, allowing godliness to take place and reside in our mind. It's making room 
for a different level of consciousness. Almost like, you know, like as if you're seeing Gaula now. And when you have that, guess what happens? Then the mind doesn't get so constricted. Then the light of Hashem flows like a superconductor. You know, when you have electricity and you want 100% of the electricity going from one entity to the next, and you use a set, the, the superconductor as a channel. If the person has the ability to sharpen their mind and make space for this godliness to reside in their mind, then the body and every part of you becomes like a superconductor, then 100% godly energy can come through to you if it's a pure superconductor. As you know, if a superconductor is, it has impurities, then some of the energy gets lost along the way. So davening helps bring the light of Mashiach into your mind so that you have these like incredible capabilities to allow this flow of godliness to then go through the constriction of your throat to reach your heart so that you could be in that state of simcha. Because Bina is about using your mind. It's about delving. It's about contemplating. It's about gazing. It's about yeah, unbelievable, like, a, a, attachment of your chokhmah bin and das, that shams wisdom. That's the beginning stage of when you open up your sitter. Imagine how many times we fall prey to the Eitz Sahara. The Gemara teaches us, but for the words of prayer, our body cannot get pure. And then our godly soul cannot get out of its slumber state that's in our mind. Because the main residence of the godly soul is in the mind. But if we don't purify our body so that the godly soul can come fully integrated into our mind, then the Yetzirah takes the, the, the real estate of our mind and has free rent and then takes over. And if we don't do that, then that's how the day looks like it's not Geula. That's how the day looks like I don't have Amuna and I don't have Bitachon and I don't know and I don't know and the unknowns and the unknowns and the fears and the anxiety and for some depression and it's from some others are addictions because they can't cope because the godly soul is in a slumber state. Once the godly soul is awakened by the purity of the tefillah that mezakek and purifies your body, then the godly soul has a chance to come into the heart. Then the, the, the heart, the light of God's wisdom can then banish the darkness. It's, it, it, it's just really turning on the light of everything that's between you. That's the essence of godliness that are you. Just like Esther. She's begging Hashem. She's pleading. She's praying. She's getting closer and closer, the king of kings. And then Hashem lifts Queen Esther, as it were, the neshama that's hidden inside our heart. Because that's where the, the deepest penimut of the, the person who we truly are. That's where Chalak Elokai Mamish is. There is a teaching. And the teaching is that you have to circumcise your heart. Because... There's layers, just like the circumcision, and we have to get rid of it. The light of our wisdom begins to banish the darkness of our words, of prayer that allows this klipas and this blockages and this heart wall melt away. So we can get into the chamber of the king, which is within us. So it's not so easy sometimes we have such a long list to do it is so unbearably difficult even sometimes to feed ourselves but if we want to be the catalyst to bring Mashiach we want more simcha and the only way to really get more simcha is when we're redeemed when we've gotten rid of the layers when we've transformed uh, uh, the, the the territory of the mind instead of being hijacked by the Eight Sahara, that we become like, you know, this is my settlement and uh, I'm locking the doors and I'm going to then now allow this light to continue to flow to every part of my body, the hand that will hug more, the mind that will think more clearly and not be uh, like all fragmented and all over the place. 
my, my feet is going to give me the strength to go forward, to be able to dance with my children and to give them the faith that they need so desperately this generation. My goodness. Now more than ever, Simcha has to pave the way. And we can fill our mouths with joy because we're so close to the ultimate redemption. We're so close that we can, we can with our words, give chizuk to our children because we're always in God's hands. And our bond with Hashem is never impaired. And if you look at the word, machshava, when we were saying, it also has Moshiach Ba in it. So when we have these thoughts percolating in our mind, then we can more easily speak of it. And that's why we, if you look at the Shema, it says, V'dibarta Ba, right after the, the whole experience of our coming to Hashem, we, we're saying Shema Yisrael, we're like, you're the only one. Then as we gaze at Hashem in tefillah, and then as we focus our attention that, 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 that he doesn't need our worry and he's the master of the universe. And he's up in the heavens above and he's been loved food. He's here in this physical kingdom of his. And then Vahavta, then that fire of our meditation becomes a love of Hashem. Then that fire and love of Hashem opens our heart. Then our heart becomes an open vessel a clear vessel, a purified vessel. Every part of our physical body becomes pure. But then we need more light. And the Debar Tabam, then we learn the Torah, and then we bring the light in our heart. And it has to be right after Tabam. Like, it, it, it's a, if, if it's delayed, it, it mamish like, like won't give us the oxygen that we need throughout the day. I always say when you build a, a, a skyscraper, and you're not going to go to the engineer and say, ah, well, I want to make the foundation out of Play-Doh. It's just, no. <laughs> That's like, you wouldn't even believe. We're building a Mashiach day? Are we going to start it with Play-Doh? And do other things that like, are not going to give us the chizuk and the strength? Not going to give us the power of our mind and the, the softness of our heart? That's tefillah. That's Mashiach. And we could bring Geula every day anew for ourselves when we don't lose anchorage, when we build that foundation. And then, Bezrat Hashem, we have a Mashiach day. We have the power almost to ignore what's around us and say, This is my God. And Hashem is doing this. And if this is happening, it is, as Ori Breider said so beautiful, Arur. And if you look at the tefillah, Yotze Or, Bore Choshech, Ose Shalom, which we say every day right before the Shema almost. Yotze Or, which comes from Yitzira. Yitzira is like a, a low level, like a lower level of godliness. That's where light comes from. Bore Chosha comes from the world of Bria. That's a higher world. That's a greater good. The darkness, the, the plague, the, the challenge, it comes from a higher place of holiness. And what do we do here in this world? Ose Shalom, because this world is the world of Asiya. We need to make peace that the darkness and the light is the same thing. It's all from Hashem. It's all one. And that's Adelo Yada. When you can face the darkness and say, this is light, Ose Shalom, you bring peace to this world, and that is Mashiach now, till the ultimate Mashiach, Techa Bumayan Mamish. When we continue to pray, may we continue to take those steps like Esther did with Mordechai, the Torah, and the Tfilas, and going into Hashem's chamber to be like a brother. In last week's parsha, I was reading that we can reach a level of like a brother to Hashem, a brother and a sister to Hashem, like we were when the Beit HaMikdash was. And that's when we daven and we learn, we have the power to raise ourselves up by giving ourselves over to Hashem, because ultimately He raises up. May we have a simcha of Adar. May we always be uh, celebrating and have broad-mindedness and... Uh, be together already. Okay, you have your tickets? Are your bags packed? 
we'll pack it up with Simcha this month and, and have your ticket to Simcha Dick Day. And we will merit to see Mashiach Techev Umiyad Mamish in Yerushalayim with the Beit HaMikdash. Thank you, my dear soul sisters and everyone around the world who's listening to this. May we continue to be on fire with Simcha. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for sharing such beautiful words, Miriam. It's such a pleasure to hear from you. Our simcha is our koach. Our simcha is our strength. And um, we are now, we have, we are up to the six o'clock mark for the tefillah. I know that Rifki Katz wanted to share a few words. Rifki, do you want to share something just briefly and then you'll speak afterwards again after the tefillah? Or should we start with the tefillah now? Um, I, I can speak after the tefillah if that's better. Let's all be united. One more minute. I don't think it's worth it to start. Yeah. Let's okay. just be united. I just want to say thank you so much for Karen for uh, organizing this and thank you to the speakers. I'm sorry I didn't get to hear. Hopefully this was recorded. And uh, there's something blocking the screen. Sorry? There's something blocking the bottom of your screen. Something is blocking it. The bottom of, oh, okay. <laughs> is that better? Okay. I just want to thank the organized big start. Sorry? Yeah, uh, it's six o'clock, Karen. We should start. Yeah, I okay. just want to thank everybody for being on here together and let's do this. We should have tremendous hatzlacha. Amen, amen, amen. So I have on, I'm going to be sharing with you now um, on the screen the feel of the geula that we have. I want everyone to try to have intention in our mind and in our hearts that we're united everyone take a deep breath and just imagine imagine the geula imagine Hashem bringing us Yeshuot and understand that we have the power with our tefillot, with our yearning, with our desire with our ratzon to be able to unite and bring about the Yeshuat Am Yisrael. So let us now unite together in tefillah. I'm going to share on the screen some tefillah. There's, this, there's a woman who actually put this together. We have to thank her, her name is Devora. And uh, she put together this whole gathering and put it out there. And, and this, was the, this is what initiated us gathering together. So I want to thank her very much for that. And we'll talk about it after. Let me just screen share. Sorry, one second. Sorry, I'm going to bring it so you can see it. Okay, I'm going to read the Hebrew and I'm going to ask Rifki if she can read the English afterwards. Let's all say it together now in unison. May Hashem hear our tefillot. Hashem sepatai tiftach ufi yagi tehilatecha. Ribono shel olam, kulanu po yeladecha, uvim, uchadim beota sha'a. בכל העולם פונים אליך בתפילה ומתחננים שתקבל בכן וחסד ורחמים. מודים אנחנו לך על כל החסדים שבכל יום מבקשים מעומק הלב שתגעלנו מהרה מהגלות והסבל הארוך כל כך. שלח לנו משיח צדקנו ברחמים, איננו יכולים לחכות יותר, מצפים ומייחלים להתגלות שמך הגדול. ומלכותך בעולם כולו, ושנזכה לראות בתפארת בניין בית המקדש במהרה. We're going to wait to say the Shema right after Rifki says the English. Rifki, go ahead. You're on, you have to unmute. Master of the universe, we, the children of Israel, all united around the world at this moment, 
are crying out to you. Please accept our prayer with grace and kindness. We sincerely thank you for all your daily blessings, but we also ask of you to send Mashiach now to redeem us with mercy from this too long exile and all suffering and to bring peace in the world. We cannot wait anymore. We also desire your great and one name to be revealed and your presence back to the rebuilt Beis Hamikdash, the holy temple. <coughs> Let's say together, Shema. Let's say together, Shema Yisrael. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai. Adonai Hua Elohim 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 Adonai Melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Imloch, Laolam Vaed. Adonai Melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Imloch, Laolam Vaed. Anna Adonai Hoshi Anna. Anna Adonai Hoshiana. Anna Adonai Hatslikana. Anna Adonai Hatslikana. I'm going to share with you another beautiful tefillah that was written by a mother. who lost her son uh, to a terrorist attack. We share this tefillah l'geula every day with um, our Lent members. And I want to share it with you. It's a beautiful tefillah. Let's say it together. Yehi ratzal milfanecha Adonai Eloheinu velohei adotinu Av rachaman שלמה <laughs> נגילה ונשמחה בישועתך במהרה בימינו, ואני בחסדך בטחתי, יגל ליבי בישועתך, אשיר אל אדוני כי גמל עלי, יהיו לרצון אמרי פי והגיון ליבי לפניך, אדוני צורי וגועלי. This תפילה יש בי לעילוי נשמת דוד בן שמעון. It was written by אפסי גלבנבץ. If you would like to ask someone else and if I'm able to do the other tefillah that's on the uh, decoration. With the, with yes, the sure. And maybe give someone else the honor. Miriam, can you read the English for yeah. us? Yes. Can you see it? 
Trying to find it. I'm on the phone. Let's see if I can see it. Okay. Uh, may it be your will, Hashem, our God, and the God of our forefathers, merciful Father, who listens to prayer. May my prayer be welcomed and loved before you. And may you accept with will and with mercy speedily in our days. Please desire to redeem us with a complete redemption, a redemption with kindness and great mercy. Abundance mercy arise, having mercy on Sion because it's the time to favor her. For the appointed time has come for the sake of your mikdash, for the sake of your land, for the sake of your nation who desire your closeness, who are longing to see your mighty splendor. Make us happy, our Father, with your salvation, our salvation, and send us Eliyahu and Navi, who is remembered for the good with Mashiach, the son of David. We will rejoice and be glad in your salvation speedily in our days. As for me, I trust in your kindness. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to you, Hashem, for he dealt kindly with me. May the expressions of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart Find favor before you, Hashem, my rock, my redeemer. Thank you, Miriam. I'm going to share with you another beautiful tefillah that I'm not sure who wrote it. Rifki can tell us who wrote it. It's a beautiful tefillah. And this is on the initiative of welcome Mashiach that Rifki heads to be able to try to bring about Mashiach very, very speedily in our day. Rifki, you want to tell us about this? I want to give credit to my friend Basia who wrote this up and uh, hope everybody can join in. And if you want, we can put maybe put the PDF on, around on the groups to share. Perhaps women would like to say it when they be for candlelighting. Hear me? Am I being seen and heard? Yes. Okay. We, the B'nai Yisrael, request of Hashem, master of the world, to return his Shechina back down into this world in her full glory with the Beit Mikdash. We request of you, Hashem, king of the universe, to fulfill the promise to grant us a physical king Melech HaMashiach, the descendant of David Malka HaMashiach, to instill the fear of heaven upon us, teach us in the ways of your holy Torah, and bring us closer to you. We stand humbly before you, ready and prepared through the avodah of all preceding generations to wholeheartedly accept the kingship of Melech HaMashiach upon us. We implore of you, Hashem, to fulfill his request as you have promised and related through our holy Nevi'im from the beginning of time, we cry out from the bottom of our souls and our entire beings, Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Yimloch, Le'olam Va'ed, Ad Masai, Ad Masai, Ad Masai. We want, we need, we deserve, and we demand Mashiach now, Mamish. Amen v'amen. I want to also um, share with you, see if I can get it on the screen, which we say in gratitude, we want to be grateful to Hashem for allowing us to join here together today and to be united. We want to thank Hashem for the opportunity of joining here together and the opportunity of bringing about the Yeshua. I don't have the one I wanted to share. Let me see if I can put this on the screen. One second.
מזמור לתודה, הריעו לאדוני כל הארץ, עבדו את אדוני בשמחה, בואו לפניו ברננה, דעו כי אדוני הוא האלוהים, הוא עשנו ולא אנחנו, עמו וצון מריתו. בואו שעריו בתודה, חצרותיו בתהילה, הודו לו ברכו שמו, כי טוב אדוני לעולם חסנו והדור ודור אמונתו. And we have the English here as well. Miriam, are you able to read the English? Do you see it? Yes. Let me try here. It's a little small, but let's see. Here we go. A song of thanksgiving. A song of thanksgiving offering. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with joy. Come before him with praise. Know that the Lord is Hashem. He made us and we are his people and the flock of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, into his holy courtyards with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His kindness is forever until generations after generations is his faith. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hashem, for allowing this forum of women together. Thank you, Hashem, for bringing the Geula. We anticipate and we're yearning to see Yeshuot for Am Yisrael as we gather here today. Besimcha, be'ahava. Let's take upon ourselves right now that we all accept upon ourselves the mitzvah that we say every day with Lev Am. We accept upon ourselves the mitzvah be'ahavta l'recha k'mocha. that we accept upon ourselves loving each other unconditionally. Hareni mekabelet al atzmi et mitzvat ve'ahavta l'recha k'mocha. I accept upon myself the mitzvah of love your fellow neighbor as yourself. We all love ourselves. Let's love each other no matter what. No masichot, no masks, nothing separating us. We have unconditional love for all of Am Yisrael and the schut of the achadut that we feel together. I feel the energy here, even though I can't see everybody. In that schut, in that merit, may Hashem bring us the Yeshua and Mashiach Tzitkenu. Rivki, you wanted um, to share. Um, did you want to share something else with regards to the song? Which song? I'm sorry. <laughs> you sent me a song. There was a... Oh, no, that was um, Yona Rifka. I don't know if she's on. I sent her the Zoom link. Yona Rifka, are you on? Um, I sent her the link. Are we able to tell if she's okay. on? Let me see. No, I'll wait. You want to, I can say a few words while we're waiting for her. Unless, was there somebody else? What's that's... his last name? Himmelman. No, I don't see her on. Uh -huh. No. Okay, do you want to share a few words with you right now? Sure, I'm going to try. Let me just see one more time, one second. Um, Ahavi, are you here? Okay, Rifki, you go. Yeah, so actually, I just wanted to share something, a drop humorous to, to open with a joke. Last night, I was trying to figure out how to add um, my notes somewhere in proximity to the screen, because I knew I'd probably be a little bit tired, although it's not like in Australia where it's 3 a.m. Here, it's already, you know, 8 a.m., but figured I need some notes. So last night, I found this contraption with all this like very thick tape that I <laughs> hung my notes up across my the top of my screen and I'm trying out the zoom you know with my husband and he's on and I'm not I'm nowhere to be seen and I'm like why am I not on here and he was, he was trying to figure out do you have the right link do you and then <laughs> he burst out laughing because he saw basically that it was a thick piece of tape right across the top of my laptop which basically covered the little camera <laughs> so that was explained so all I had to do was obviously remove that piece of tape and then I was able to be seen and everything that we see is Hashkach Pratis and is a mashal for uh, you know a Yiddishkeit and for 
our present circumstances and it reminded me how we say that Mashiach is so close, he's right at our doorstep and all there is is like a paper thin wall between us and we are breaking down that paper thin wall right now and we will all see each other so soon and see Mashiach and Hashem's glory filling the entire world. I'm sure some of you already spoke about uh, the significance of the story of Purim, especially the greatness of Esther Hamalka, and certainly it was shared, or we all know how the famous words that Mordechai told her that who knows if this is the reason that you came to this royal position just for this moment that you would be the one that would bring about the, the Yeshua and Hatzalah for the Jewish people. And basically, Queen Esther was left with a choice to either focus inwards and kind of stay in her comfort zone and fall back on the excuse that, you know, she wasn't yet called to the king and it might endanger her life, etc. Or she made the initiative to ultimately, you know, step up to the plate, so to speak, and ask Mardachai to fast for her and decided to approach the king. And obviously, her initiative brought about the the, his, the historic um, miracle of Purim. So her brave leadership continues to inspire us Jewish women, even in the most trying of times when we're faced with all kinds of Hamans, Le'aleinu. The Purim story teaches us that when we come together as a community in the face of adversity, we will, we can, we will, we are accomplishing tremendous Hatzalah and Yeshua for Am Yisrael and the entire world. We know that there's a lot of controversies going on now, and there's been a lot of turbulence and tensions with the elections and the masks and the lockdowns and then yes, the vaccine and no, the vaccine. And we just keep realizing more and more that the only answer, the only solution, the only world leader, the only vaccine, the only cure for the entire world is Mashiach. And how lucky we are as women and as Jewish women who are at the forefront. We know that any important times in our history, in the history of Am Yisrael, it was the women that were at the forefront. It was in our schus, we left Mitzrayim. We were the ones that contributed to the building of the Mishkan first. We were the ones uh, in the story of, of Hanukkah, we helped bring about the miracle and the story of Purim. And, and even by Matan Torah itself, Hashem told my Rabbeinu, Kaisem Ralebeis, Yaakov of Saga B'nai Yisrael first give the Torah over to the Jewish women because they're going to be the ones to transmit it to their families and it's going to be in their merit that it will have its continuity. So now we are on a pedestal. We're the luckiest people in the world that we have the merit and our generation, the seventh generation that whether we, we er worked for it or earned it, it's handed to us on a silver platter to have this merit. And all the malachim, all the angels above, and all the elamites, all the worlds of Bria, Yitzira, Asiya, Silas, Bria, Yitzira, Asiya, and all the neshamis that ever existed, and all of creation, they're all riding on us now. And history is beckoning to us. And all these neshamis, they're all rooting for us down in Shamayim, you can do it, you can do it. The bases are loaded <laughs> and we're ready to hit that home run. So I just want to end actually, because I know there were a lot of speeches and Baruch Hashem, we had the tefillah. I like to always try to focus on a call to action because Hamaisa Hua Ikar. And if we make a hachlata that we come out of this with something, even if it's we consider, we might consider it small, but don't undermine, never undermine. Everybody's at a different stage in life. And if you have young children at home, then that's your avoida. And if you help raise them with more simcha or more positivity, or we work on our shalom bias, whatever stage in life we're up to, please don't undermine, don't underestimate. We are all an important piece of this puzzle and we all together create a beautiful, harmonious symphony by everybody playing their part and doing their their part. So I just want to make a suggestion if you'd like to do something, a few things that are perhaps easy. We have a campaign called Vote Mashiach, which actually was part of the Ashkafa practice and how this tefillah, this global tefillah came to be. This woman, Deborah Rosen, actually did this worldwide tefillah eight years ago. And I remember seeing a video circulating 
sometime in the past about this Mashiach Tefillah around the world, and I was so impressed by it, and I was wondering who created this video, who's behind it, I wish I would know. This was a few years ago. And recently when we started the Vote Mashiach campaign, Deborah joined the group and she was very motivated and inspired and decided that she would bring back that tefillah and bring it to a whole new level. And now with you know social media having developed so much more since that time, she felt then they reached about 2 million people and now she just wanted to reach millions in every corner of the world. So how, we don't know the ripple effect starting that group and then Deborah happened to join and the Ashkacha Pratis and motivated her to do this again. And you know we tried to help her out. So Hashem is connecting his foot soldiers all around the world, especially us women together. He's propelling us forward to be able to bring things to that finish line. And I just want King. They were from the um, Shevet Yehuda, and Hashem actually appointed them to be king, but the Jewish people had to actually to, to anoint them and to give them life by saying the words Yechi HaMelech, that the king should live. And these words, this slogan actually also bring, helps to bring about, to give life to Mashiach, as it says in Tehillim chapter 21, that, um, I don't have exact words in front of me, but there's one thing that Mashiach asks for. There's one thing that Mashiach asks of Hashem that he needs, and that is life. Chayim shal mimcha. So actually, by saying these words, Yechi HaMelech, we are literally infusing Mashiach with life, so that wherever he is, whoever he is, we're giving him vitality, we're giving him the ability to complete his shlichus, of Shlach Nabi Atishlach, which was Maishu Rabbeinu, was given the beginning, and Huga El Rishon Vuhuga El Achor, and every generation has a Maishu Rabbeinu and has a potential to be Mashiach. And when we say it with Simcha, with, with Zrizus, with joy and alacrity and, and, and um, enthusiasm, this it's it's a simple thing that we could add on to our tefillah, where we could say Ad Masai and Yechi Hamelach Hamashiach and David Malk of Meshicha should come and take us immediately out of Gaulus, mamish, mamish, now. I wanted to tell a um, story. I wanted to tell a story of something um, that- I'm sorry, we're not able to do that right now. We're not able to do that right now. Sorry about that. Um, we are part of a program, so we're going to share it another time. We are now going to move on to Tiferet, who wanted to share a beautiful uh, song. Um, before we start with Tiferet, I did want to say a Kapitel Tehillim for all the Cholim. So please join me now in saying Kapitel Kuf Chaf Aleph. I'm going to share with you on the screen a beautiful song that we know from... Um, from, I'm blanking right now, Yosef Karduner. What number is that in, in English? It's chapter 121. Okay, it's chapter 121, and I'm going to share it on the screen.
Okay. okay. Sorry about the feedback. Bezrat Hashem, may Hashem hear our tefillot and send refuah shlema kol cholem echa Yisrael. We should have yeshuot, sorot tovot, refuot for cholem echa Yisrael. We should all have in mind the names. Too hard to share here all the names, but everybody should have in mind an intention that a Kadosh Baruch Hu should bring healing to the entire world. Everybody should be completely healed and we should see Mashiach here revealed. I'm going to ask um, you know, Rivka if you can unmute yourself. Let me just. Are you here? Yana Rifka, are you here? Hi, Yana Rifka, do you hear us? Are you able to unmute yourself? Could press on your screen. I think I allowed you to unmute. Can you see if she's on? Yeah, I think I see that she's on. I don't know why she's not able to unmute. Maybe. Are you able to send her a private invite? Yeah, yeah. I asked her to unmute. I don't see her here. I'm going to try to Maybe double check with her that she's able to come on. Meanwhile, while we're waiting, um, I did have another person who wanted to share, but we're gonna see if she can come on one minute. I wanted to actually, before we continue, I do want to share with you something because we are, we are being broadcasted live with Torah Anytime, an incredible, incredible organization. I don't know if you know, but Torah Anytime has an incredible um, um, group. It's called the Daily Dose. And um, in the Daily Dose of Emuna, every single day, you get tremendous, tremendous chizik from different speakers around the world. And it's really amazing at the, you know, at the inspiration that you can get just for a few minutes listening to somebody. So I want to please ask you to listen to for a few minutes about what the Daily Dose is all about. I'm gonna ask you to take out your phones if you're not on your phones currently and you don't have Daily Dose. Um, it's something really incredible. Tarani Time takes the very best speakers in the world and they take the most powerful lectures, they pull out two to three minutes from the lecture, and they really make such an impact in a person's life. You see the people's reactions from it, sometimes they put the messages of how people, um, on the status of how people are reacting to it. So Baruch Hashem, over 30,000 people a day are Can getting it. Can you hear me yet? And yes, I could, just give up one minute. Yes. And I encourage everyone right now, if you can please take out your smartphones, if you have a smartphone, or if you use email, you can have it by email as well, if you prefer it that way. 
and on your phone to save this number, 929-355-4268. And I'll repeat it, it's 929-355-4268. You can save that number as per any time daily dose as in your contacts, 929-355-4268 as per any time daily dose and one of your, as one of your contacts. And then step two is that you have to WhatsApp the words, add me to that number. And once you do that, you'll be receiving the daily dose. When you type the word add me and you send it to that number, you'll have the opportunity of being able to see and view the daily dose. If you want to be added by email, it's daily dose email at gmail.com. Again, it's daily dose, D O S E, email at gmail.com. And um, not only should you do it, I encourage you to, to get your friends and your family to join as well. It's really a short two, three minute video that you get so inspired by. I really have seen so many speakers on there that I get such inspiration. I share with my groups as well. So please, if you can do that for us today and help us to join Daily Dose with Amuna. Okay, Yunarifka, you're on. She wants to share with us a song. Just a few more minutes, we're gonna have to wrap up. And I want to thank you all for being here and for joining us today in this beautiful, beautiful expression of Avat Yisrael and unity with Lev Ha'am and with all the beautiful speakers that joined us today. Please, please take it upon yourself to do something a little extra for Klal Yisrael, even in your tefillah, to add something and to ask and beseech Hashem for the Geulah Bezlat Hashem. Yona Rifka, please share with us some of your inspirational um, music. I think you're muted. One second. I hear you, but I see you, I don't hear you. Type for me what you're logged in as so that I can unmute you. I think there's something wrong with her aux because she's unmuted. You could see she's unmuted, but it's something on her technical side that you can't hear her. Okay. We were able to hear you a minute ago. I don't know what you did. It seems that you're unmuted. I'm gonna wait one more minute. We heard you a minute ago, so maybe it was just on your end. You want to speak now? Karen, no. is, it, yeah. is it okay if I post the link to the Vote Mashiach group on the chat, if anybody would like to join? No, there's no, there's no chat. We're on tour anytime. But we can, um, you can say it out loud for everyone to... So just there's <clears> a phone number. Thank you. There's a phone number you could subscribe to just write Vote Mashiach or subscribe. Um, it's an admin group only. There's just a few posts a week and they're not very long and they're informative and also very easy media that you could share with others. So it's an easy way to spread Gula energy around the world. So please, uh, if you can write down this phone number, 929-266-9200. Zero again nine two nine two six six nine six eight zero, and what's brought us together for this filo is actually this group. So hopefully it'll bring mazel and bracha to us all, where we could. Can you hear me now? And plan further how to vote Mashiach. Because <laughs> I can't hear anybody. <laughs> yeah, we hear you now. Go ahead. Okay. I can't hear anybody. No. Put your hand up if you can hear me, though. You can hear me. 
Okay, I guess I don't know. <laughs> I don't have any technical technical support over here, so I'll just assume that you can hear me. That's good enough. Um, okay, so yeah, tech tech is not my thing, unfortunately, but um, we're we're getting there slowly but surely. Let me. I just got a beautiful track um, to made to um, one of my songs, so I'm going to play it here and uh hopefully it won't like um hopefully it'll be you'll be able to hear it together and it won't like make the, that funny sound you hearing yeah okay hold on backtrack okay now we know that, that everybody can hear can hear me oh sorry that's the wrong one okay <laughs> sorry okay backtrack this song is called higher gear and um we're, we're we're acknowledging and that that we are moving into a higher higher gear okay so here we go with that let's let's move ahead with the right song no. try to hire somebody for this next time Okay, take two. Lie, 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 lie,
sun shall be done upon my holy mountain whence my kingship flows as an endless fountain the world is shifting to a higher gear do you see do you feel incline your ear to the prophet and hear words that cause the haze to clear the world is a lifting to a higher sphere do you see do you hear tune into the prophet of our time everything will fall in line Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Jenna Rivka, for sharing that. Really inspiring song. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Just lost who said that. So we have another special guest here who's going to sing us a song and pick up the mood a little bit as well. We have a beautiful Sarah Liba Mitzman. She's a friend of mine, and she would also like to share a song that it's related to Geula. And let's all, you know, listen to Sarah Liba, are you with us? Let me see if I could put you on. Okay, we're gonna do this without a visual today, my loves, because I'm getting over COVID and I'm in PJs and it's a hell <laughs> and I didn't expect this. Sarah Liba, uh, just, you can sing, tell us what song you're gonna sing us. So I'm gonna sing, I guess, a song that I wrote when Leif Ha'am first was emerging for Leif Ha'am. Would that be good? Great. It happens to be kind of a light song, but it's really, since we're all talking about loving each other and the Ahavas Yisrael that we really want to generate, like Knast is called Yudim, to bring together our hearts as one. Hopefully this will give us a little inspiration because Leif Ha'am is really um, a motivational force for us to really activate that. So you hop it, you can sing whatever you got with me, or just la 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 by yourselves. Everybody is good. Everybody is good. When you see them as you should, then you know everybody is good. Because everybody's got a soul. Everybody's got a soul. He's selfish and above them. That's why you gotta love them. Everybody's got a soul. And when we love one another unconditionally, this world will be redeemed miraculously. Now is the time I have enough. Hearts united, leva am. Kulanu tovi, kulanu tovi. Tova hava roim shevemet. When we love one another unconditionally, this world will be Miraculously, now is the time I have chinam, hearts united, leham. Hashem loves us, that's true. Hashem loves us, that is true. He's asking this of me. He's asking this of you. I have a dream. Shame it. 
so much. I hope you heard that. I was not set up at all for, with mics, etc. But it comes from my heart to your heart. Thank you, Tara Leba Mitzman, who wrote this beautiful song for Lev Ha'am. And those of you who'd like to join Lev Ha'am, you can write down this number and send a Texas number or reply the email first. It's nishaylevhaam at gmail.com. The email is nishay, N-S-H-E-I, lev, L-E-V, haam, H-A-A-M, at gmail.com. Or you can text 917-679-1000. You can send a WhatsApp text to that number again, it's 917-679-1711 and we'll put you on our group and you'll get the daily um, reminders to do the tefillah together, united with us, as well as other programs that we have going on. I would also like to tell you about a very special initiative. Um, there are so many women that are in the world that are doing so much in this world and that's what we all knew we, we all need to do we all need to step up to the plate to be able to do something something for am israel so terrible libra mitzman actually runs the shabbos queen project and you can join that by going and also sending an email to the shabbos queen project at gmail.com i believe that's the email right it's the shabbos queen project at gmail.com and you will be getting daily messages about the beauty of Shabbos and you'll hear Sarah Liebel singing songs and sharing her inspiration. And then I wanna tell you about one other initiative that I recently joined, it's a Tehillim group that we try to finish Sefer Tehillim. I don't know if you heard about this initiative, but there is this concept of, of, um, of yeah, um, Chaim, of Chaim um, Knievsky Shlita said that we should try to finish Tehillim 10 times. And this lady took upon herself to really try to get women together and gather and to try to finish Tehillim. And she actually just did the first cycle and we're starting another cycle very, very soon. So I want to also welcome you, if you could please write down um, this email address to be able to join in the Tehillim. And you only have to say it once, once a month. It's your Tehillim. There's a Google Docs sheet and she'll tell you which Tehillim you're saying. Please write down this email, tehillimforgeula at gmail.com, tehillim, T-E-H-I-L-L-I-M, the number four, geula, G-E-U-L-A-H, at gmail.com. Tehillim, the number four, geula, with an H at the end, at gmail.com. So that's another amazing initiative of trying to finish Tehillim 
again and again and again. I'm sure there are other talent groups that you're part of, but this is an amazing initiative that was started by Chaya Sarah Singer, a friend of mine. And I want to thank you all. This was an amazing program. I know it was quite lengthy, but it was such a special time to be together, together here, to be united, to be davening together, to be yearning for the geula, to be, to be asking and beseeching Hashem, besimcha, be'ava, to bring about Mashiach Tekenu. Thank you, Orit Esther Ryder. Thank you, Miriam Yerushalmi, Rifki Katz, Yona Rifka, Tzor Liba, everybody who was here today to share their inspiration. And thank you to all of you. And don't underestimate the power that you have as women in your tefillah, in your yearning, and just where you are in your homes, saying a kapitel to him, having in mind Klal Yisrael, and understanding that when we are davening, we're really united, we're really one. And what we say as women and the intentions that we have. And if we do a besim it's even more elevated. It has the ability to bring about Yeshuot. And like Miriam Yerushalmi said, it's in our thoughts. And I want to share with you one last thought is besimcha. To be in a state of besimcha in happiness. It starts... The same letters flipped around, machshava, it's in our thoughts. Let's utilize the kavanot that we can have to be able to bring about Yeshuot Am Yisrael just in our thoughts. And that's what Leva Am is spreading. And that's what all these amazing initiatives and women that are doing this, they just had a thought in their mind and look at what's possible. Thousands of women, thank you, Devorah from France, who initiated this. Thousands and thousands of, and millions probably, of people, not only women, are gathering today to beseech and ask Hashem for Mashiach. May we be zocheh on this Purim, on the great day that's even greater than Yom Kippur, to be mitkahel together, lech kenos et kol yudim, so that we can go and greet Mashiach, Bezrat Hashem, that we'll be listening to the Megillah of our Megillot, our own personal Megillot, not only to Megillah Tessel, which we're going to be reading. We each are writing our own Megillot. May we be zoche to see Mashiach, to Kenu Barachamim Bekarov, and see the Geula and witness the Yeshua of all Am Yisrael. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Amen. Thanks, Thanks Karen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Tor. Anytime. Te Amen. Thank you, Chazak. Thank you, Hashem, for Mashiach now. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. We all dance at the women's division of the Bet Hamikdash in one big round circle with our tambourines and uh, pom poms in hand. Have a great one. Amen. <laughs> Amazing. Like Thank you, you. really, like Karen. For everything you do, Karen, for Am Yisrael, my goodness, and Orit, and all the and all of you, oh my gosh, nonstop, nonstop, Sir Liba, Mitzman, nonstop, every other second, like wow, every every wow. Jewish woman, everybody, everybody on here and all over. Can I just say one last thing? Because I I don't want anyone to feel chas v'shalom discouraged. Mashiach doesn't come this very moment. We have to also make sure. The Yetzirah doesn't get to us and say, oh, another failed attempt. Chas v'shalom, there's no such thing. Every single tefillah brought it so much, so much closer. I heard someone quote once the Mabit who says that there's a stack of tefillahs piling up in Shemayim for the last, you know, over 2,000 years. And there's millions of tefillahs and every single tefillah is going on top of that stack. And it's going to reach a point where like, it's already, you know, Hashem is going to be ready to, to listen. So it might just be your tefillah that'll be that last one that's riding on millions of, of other tefillahs. So every, nothing goes unnoticed. And we definitely accomplished to bring Mashiach so, so, so much closer. So don't get discouraged. Amen. Amen. Bezrat Hashem. We're going to see him very, very soon. Have Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Arita Esther, for your for helping us to put this together. Thank you so much. And thank you, Torah Anytime and Chazak for helping us to promote it. Yashikah. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Yes.